my parents are immigrants. They had a, probably a certain status when they were back home where they were from or how they were growing up. Coming to the United States, they had to kind of start from scratch. And so they have kids here and they feel like you're in America. What I had growing up is nowhere near to what you have. There's so much opportunity that, you know, that's here for you. And so I expect more out of you. On this episode of Consider That, we will be exploring the 2014 drama Beyond the Lights and examining the pressures placed on characters Noni and Kaz by their parents. At what point do a parent's expectations become unreasonable for their children? Have modern parents become too hands-off when raising their kids? How do cultural factors affect how someone approaches parenting? We'll examine these questions and much more as we consider Beyond the Lights. All right, y'all, so let's talk about Beyond the Lights. I'm gonna give y'all a synopsis first, okay? So in this movie, Noni Jean, she's a successful pop star who's managed by her overbearing mother. Despite achieving superstar status, the pressure to become an icon, coupled with the demands of her mother, pressures her to commit suicide, or attempt to at least. But she's saved by this young officer named Kaz, who she later falls in love with. And throughout the film, the interesting part is his father is also a little overbearing. He pressures him to focus on his political goals and career. And then at the same time, Kaz struggles to balance happiness and the expectations of his father. So let me jump into the first question for you guys. Has anybody here ever experienced having a tiger parent? And what does that even look like? Who wants to go first? <laughs> OK, go ahead, girl. Um, Break it down for I'll us. I'll go first. I definitely have had a tiger parent. My dad, of course, is, is an immigrant coming from Kenya and my mom as well. My mom, thankfully, was a more gentle parent, so I had a nice balance, but um, I did have that. And I feel like growing up, it was always a pressure to just be a certain way. If I got a B, it's like, no, why didn't you get an A? Which I think happened in the movie to Noni when like she got the trophy and her mom was like, no, throw yeah. that away. Right. So I think that now I've learned to give my parents that grace, though, because they were pressured even more and they came into a situation, they came to America where they didn't know anything, did not know what they were doing. All they knew was that they had to survive and make a way for us. So I kind of had to like change that thought process of like the shame and the doubt and things like that and be like, this is this is how they were, you know? And this is, it just is what it is in a sense. Hmm. I, I guess a, a kind of a similar situation, but not necessarily a tiger parent on uh, my mom's end. Being that my parents were both separated, my mom instilled that confidence and strict go-getting, got to get all of those degrees, pretty much like Pokemon, got to catch them all, <laughs> to, to, to achieve that success, so to speak, that uh, white picket fence with family, debt paid off, all of that. It was pretty much that rigid structure that allowed me to continue going forward, but not necessarily a tiger uh, parent in terms of um, be on the uh, you know schedule at my beck and call. Blessingly enough, but I still had that uh, upbringing where you know if I didn't get that degree um, and if I wasn't making that money, then what are you doing um, for the sake of the family? You brought up an in anybody else? Yeah, so I come from an acting background. But my mom was my manager since I was five. I love my mom. But yeah, she was. <laughs> <laughs> mom dudes. Um, no, because she did right. a lot for me. But definitely a, a little bit of a tiger mom because I've been doing it since I was five. I definitely like when I was in school and like auditioning everything, I really didn't have a lot of time for a lot of other things. It was definitely like only A's because that was the only way that I could keep acting. So B's were not accepted. Um, even though my schedule was so crazy when I was younger. Definitely could only hang out with certain kinds of people, uh, be home at a certain time, go to bed at a certain time, wake up at a certain time. It was uh, a little strict, but I do appreciate it now being older because I feel like I have a lot of respect for what she instilled in me. It was really tough because I was a kid, so it was kind of hard to be a kid. Right. But as an adult, like I appreciate it, you know? You brought up an interesting point. You said that it's, they had to do it out of necessity. It seems to be a common theme. And in, even in the movie, when we were mm -hmm. watching it, that was kind of the case with the mom, right? She had Noni Young, mm -hmm. and then she they kind of labeled her as like a, a failure. It's so, and Noni pointed that out, right? She had something to prove. So it was out of a necessity. But then you said you appreciate your mom for doing that. Like, do we think, let me first say, is is that correct? Like, out of necessity? That's why your mom yes, did it too, even yes. though she's not from another country. Well, no. she's from America. Well, yeah, from America. Yeah, but, uh, you know, out of necessity, like, you owe a certain debt to um, the people that raised you to fulfill that, you know, level of success for yourself, but for the sake of the 
kingship, the, the last name, so to speak. Mm-hmm. It's um, interesting, that dynamic. And then what you said earlier, how to like stop that path of heavy duty, traditional, strict policies to where you, know, you have that robot-esque, all right, well, I have to do this in order to gain success in this way because I was trained, I was brought up, um, I was pretty much, quote unquote, you know, lack of a better term, brainwashed to reach that level um, in terms of a pattern. Island or not, it's within our culture um, that for some strange reason, we have to break out of, you know what I mean? So, yeah. And I think sometimes it's not even just out of necessity, but just out of not knowing. Like that's like they, they're in new territory as well. Mm-hmm. So they're just doing the best with what they have. Right. So they don't know in a sense. And we also don't yeah. really have a long leash to mess up, right? right? Yeah. When you talk about getting certain grades or doing certain things at an early age, if we don't, you know, we're kind of leaving things up to chance, right? And I think even our white counterparts, they're allowed to do certain mm-hmm. things. I mean, something as simple as I'm seeing, I'm on the subway and I'm seeing a white kid, you know, on a chair looking out uh, of the window and just the parent just <laughs> allowing them to do that, you know, a black kid. Get your butt down. You know what I mean? Not even. Hey, right now. Right. All you, all you gotta do is a look. <laughs> you know, but I, I think, you know, I think for Noni, obviously, her mom was kind of trying to make up for a mistake, right? She was outcasted. So she was trying to prove something wrong. And I think for Kaz, I mean, his father was putting something on him that he didn't fulfill. And I think we see that oftentimes in sports, and it's obviously to a detriment. But I wonder, you know, to Alex's point, I mean, is it positive what do you think do you think there's there's a positivity to being a tiger parent or to being overbearing because we can't mess up i do think it's it's weird right there's a lot of nuance in that you know when you are a tiger parent for some kids the result you know is is that they become you know a superstar they become this great politician they help others they create new things but at the same token that same kid right as you saw for for her name her noni when you push too far and you don't take into account how that person feels, how that kid is, that person is, they push them to the brink. And that didn't happen for, I forgot his name. Cass. <laughs> sorry, for Cass. But, but that, that, that happened for Noni. And so I definitely feel like it's, it's weird. Like it's, it's, it's really, as for parents, right? It's, it's trying to find that balance. And of course, like for John, I relate. Like my, and for you, like mm-hmm. my parents are immigrants. When they come here, they probably want to live through their kids. They had a, probably a certain status when they were back home and you know where they were from or how they were growing up. You know, they come to the United States and they have to kind of start from scratch. And so they have kids here and they feel like you're in America. You know, what I had growing up is nowhere near to what you have. There's so much opportunity that you know that's here for you. And so I expect more out of you. There's that mm-hmm. expectation exactly. of you. <laughs> Literally, what I've what I've done right now to get you where you need to be. Now I expect you now mm-hmm. to continue that for the sake of, mm-hmm. and and that's that's a pressure. That's a heavy burden. Where I related to the character Noni, where it's like, you know what, I I don't know because I'm doing the best I can, mm-hmm. and even when doing the best that you can, you're still like. Mm-mm even further. Um, That's why I relate to that. And that movie Whiplash, which is great as well, where it's like, even on that same dynamic, on the flip side, you're you're doing everything that you can to, you know, fulfill that mark. Mm -hmm. And even when doing so, it's kind of like, ah, I see it, but let's push even further. Like, wait a minute, meet me halfway to realize it and kind of like, see it. Mm -hmm. So then acknowledge it, and then we can go further and kind of break that chain. Mm -hmm of that heavy pressure or burden that every family holds, especially if it's a firstborn, then it's like, oh, now I'm the crash test dummy. So it seems like there's a give and take, right? There's ups and downs. So you mentioned on the downside, Noni's example, but that's kind of extreme. I think that is, I feel like I could see that being the case for all of those experiences with the tiger parents, right? So I'm curious to know in your experiences, what have been some of the negative sides to it? I'll start. <laughs> no, I, I think it's that feeling of not being good enough, right? For the people that love you the most. Like that's, I think that's the hugest thing for me. I think, you know, growing up, I was just never the guy that got the greatest grades, you know, in, in school. And for some reason, I just wasn't a school person. Like I like school, like I like learning, but like after school, like there was no homework. There was no studying. There was more, all right, I'm skateboarding, I'm making music, I'm playing you know, 2K. Friends. Right. Exactly, playing 2K, <laughs> doing whatever I like to do. And so, you know, but of course, in order for you to do well in school and to keep moving on to the next level, you have to do that. And so because I wasn't able to do that at home, 
that put me, you know, that made me butt heads with my parents and they were always getting on me. And I felt like, like I said, like I was, I never felt good enough sometimes. And that puts you in a bad place at home because once you start to feel like that, even when you do try, it, you may not even do that well, even then, then that puts you even further down that rabbit hole. And so it's, it's about finding that balance, right? As a parent, as a kid, even telling you as a kid, telling your parents, listen, and that's what ended up happening with me and my parents. I think they were tiger parents for a little bit. And then now, I mean, everyone's, you know, we're all, I feel like all of our goals are aligned. Everyone kind of thinks the same now. And it's because me and my dad, me and my mom, we had that chat, you know, we had that conversation. We, I was like, you know what? I can't take it anymore. This is who I am. This is how I do things. This is, you know, this is what it is. I want to accomplish things, but these are the things that I love. These are the things that take my attention away from things. And I wish you were a little bit more susceptible to that. And, um, you know, that's, that's really, I think, that's how you kind of combat that negativity that comes out of that. I think that ultimately everyone just wants to be seen and that's where kids can learn. That's where kids can make mistakes and just be their authentic self. And they're like, I feel like you can, you can still be a hands-on parent as long as your kid feels seen and secure. And for me, actually, it was an extreme negative experience, not on my end, but um, we had like a cousin come and live with us who had extreme pressures from their parents back in the States and end up committing suicide like in our closet, literally. So, sorry. <laughs> sorry, let me bring it back. Take your time, girl. Yeah, so, <laughs> thanks. Thank you for feeling so comfortable yeah. to be transparent I think it's important, us. yeah. yeah. Um, so I was really young, so I didn't even know what was going on, but it's just like my cousin's here and now they're gone. And they told us the story way later, although we kind of already knew what was going on. So I think that's why my mom ended up taking a way gentler approach. And ultimately, when I compare my experience to a lot of my African friends and counterparts, my parents were a bit less tiger, but still tiger. But um, like you're saying, it's more so about the, like just the approach and not the pressure because it can be that extreme. And like he wrote letters and to say, why he did it and it was because he couldn't take the pressure of who he had to be in the states and he's going to like a hbcu in a college getting called like you know african beauty scratch all these different things just not it just was a lot for him so it can be that extreme it, and it gets to that point and um thank you for yeah. that and uh we appreciate you it gets to that point to where you then thank you for that have that conversation where you know what i have to be transparent because I can't take this anymore. And um, as amazing as our parents are in terms of giving us that confidence and upbringing, there is a point where with the outside factors as well coming in where it's, 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 it's just too much. But then all of us as a culture, we, we tend to just put that on as an armor mm -hmm. and continue to go forward. And that's one thing too, to where we also have to have that conversation, like, like take that off. Well, that's what that's what I was wondering, right? You know, being that we are now one removed from our parents who may be immigrants, how are you going to move forward maybe with your children, your nieces, your nephews and really specifics, right? Someone mentioned being seen. What does that actually look like? What are the things that you're going to say and do that are going to be different that are taking the positive qualities of maybe a parent who was a bit overbearing, but also being gentle? So there's obviously a generational aspect to this, right? We, a lot of us talked about having immigrant parents and I believe they're coming from the perspective of they know what it's experienced to be born into something and possibly staying in that class. But then coming to America, the land of opportunity, but having to work for it. And we all realize America is a capitalist society. And so you have to work hard to get somewhere. And so that may be where they're pushing us. But what do you think is a more healthy way to be proactive, but not instill this pressure that honestly, for a lot of people, crumbles them. I mean, I'll speak from my experience. So my mom's actually first generation, and then my grandmother, she is. So full transparency, my dad is black and my mom is Asian. So my mom, I think, felt the pressures from her mom, who's an immigrant, about like, you know, I came here, I worked really hard, I brought the whole family over here, you need to do well, you need to succeed. She didn't follow the normal path, which is be a nurse, engineer, whatever the case is, my mom's considered like the black sheep. And she wasn't allowed to do a lot of uh, the things she wanted to do. Like she wanted to be a dancer. She wanted to be in the entertainment industry. Um, it's funny, when I watched this movie, it 
I see a lot of like me and my mom in it. Mm. So now going back to me, I feel like what my mom did for me was she was very strict, but I think the benefit was that because she wasn't allowed to explore a lot of options, she let me do everything. And even if she didn't necessarily like know what that field was or anything about it, she educated herself. And I feel like that's how you can prepare your kids. Like while your kids are learning, you should be learning too, like not stopping them. Cause then I think that that helps that prepare them for like this competitive world, being able to like just take anything head on and like learn about it. And then in turn, like that's what I'm gonna do with my kids. I'm gonna let them do whatever they want. I'm gonna support them. But I'm also going to make sure and be like, if you're going to do this, we're going to do it the right way. Like you're you're going to be focused. You're going to do it. And then if you don't love it anymore, then we'll try something new. You know what I mean? That was literally what Marquise said. Y'all on the same page. Yeah. <laughs> but you did. You did. You did mention something. At times you weren't able to be a kid. And so I'm yeah. curious, is there anything that maybe could be tweaked? You know, yes, you're allowed to explore and do things. And once you find that passion, you're being pushed in that way. But yet, I think there's a beauty in this like innocence of a child, right? And that's something we don't get back. And so is there any way in which you can push gently and, and lightly, but also allow for this exploration in terms of just your mind? Yeah, and I, I think a big part of that, and I can only speak from my experience, is just not putting whatever pressures you as a parent feel on your kid. Um, I also think it goes back to that community factor, because I feel like I wasn't able to be a kid a lot of the times because my mom was a single parent and she was raising me and then she also didn't really have like a bunch of support from her family. So I feel like a lot of the times like she's moving in a way where it's like we have to get this, 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 this done. I don't really have time for this. You need to move the way that I'm moving because that's just all she could do is like the best she could do. So I feel like as a parent, those pressures that you feel, you kind of have to find that balance of not like putting it on your kid. You know what I mean? I think that we should start to separate like the character from the accolades and from the success and from the money and kind of just let our kids know, okay, you might have messed up here, but you're still a good person. Like, and so that self-love, that um, authenticity, like who are you for real, for real, and all this extra stuff is just extra. And I think that will be like a more gentle approach to just have that foundation of self first. And then of course we can, we can compete all day. Like let's, let's, <laughs> let's get it for real. But let's know who we are first because like Noni, she had everything in the world and was ready to end it all, so. Can I say yeah. those affirmations are so key because I, they were so annoying when my mom used to do them when I was younger, but as I got older, I started to recall them. So she'd say things like, you're better than that. You're certain, she didn't even want me wearing like spaghetti straps to high school. You're better than that. Your skirt's too, come on, you're classier than that. Yeah. And it's annoying when you're younger, you could understand, right? But getting older, then I started to adopt some of those things. So I think those affirmations are so important. Even telling your kids you're beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. I only heard my mom say that once. When she said that to me though, like it really stuck. But I, I, I want to push back on that a little bit because she say things like you're better than that, right? And we're in this age now where women can wear and should wear whatever they want, whatever makes them feel good. And so was there even still some ignorance at a point where she, your mom maybe only knew what she knew and maybe there was a, a different way or did you still receive it in the way you feel like you needed to? That Let me make sure I understand the question because this also depends on who you're speaking to. Mm -hmm. So since you're speaking to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that what she, it could, and someone would say there is ignorance to that because you should be able to wear whatever you want. However, I do think it's important for society to understand that while we have the freedom to make those decisions, they still come with certain results, unwanted results, right? Unwanted attention and things like that. So for the type of person that I grew up to be, and yes, of course, I was influenced by my parents, it worked for me and it helped me to kind of, of course, I had to deal with some unwanted in whatever in all areas mm -hmm. but i realized things like that helped to minimize it when i heard the conversations that i was having with other women and my friends and whatnot you know it definitely makes sense i mean i'm just thinking like monique and like the bonnet thing yeah. right where that too i get where monique is going but i also understand women should be comfortable and like i, I don't have children right but if i had a daughter of course i would be like I would maybe look at certain things and want to say something, but I would be resistant. And I would, you know, hopefully my wife is able to say something in a different way than I could. Mm -hmm. And I think because as black people, once again, we have a small margin of error. And I get that, right? Especially as a black man, you know, I recognize if I walk out in, outside in a do-rag, I'm being perceived a certain way. Exactly. And I could be the most upstanding gentleman there is. And so how, 
as we're evolving and as we're getting to a different place, that love is obviously delicate. And so how do we continue to evolve with the times? Can I tell you, though, you brought up such a great point, because with the bonnet, I don't think I've ever worn a bonnet to the airport, but I've done similar looks. (laughs) (laughs) And perfect example, people treat you differently. So literally go there and I'm like invisible in the bonnet-esque style. But then if I go dress like this, you know what people are doing for me? Let me grab your bag for you, Mm ma'am. Oh, are you sitting, if I go to the front of the line, ain't nobody asking questions. Oh, what seat are you in? Ain't nobody asking nothing. I think what it is, and you did touch on this, is the communication of it all. But I think it's a parent's responsibility to prep us for the world. And if you're going to, maybe to your point, if you're gonna give us the options, help us to understand what comes with both options. Mm -hmm. So now here you go, you make your choice, but don't be surprised when you get the response that you get. I think this, for the way I would if I were had kids, but <laughs> we all know it ain't having a mom, dad. I'm sorry. Um, uh, is uh, you know, I have two godsons, um, and they're, they're you know what I mean, and they're beautiful and they're amazing. But I also am literally that. I am a guide to say, hey, you know, this is these are your options. These are your choices. This is what's going on in the world right now. Can I ask you? Do you think in this day and age that we're getting a little too light with our parenting, like this current generation, like we're being way too sensitive and just not giving our kids what they need because we're giving them the freedom to make any decisions that they want. Yeah, there's that side of it, but there's also a side where it's like, you know what, you're a human being, you have choices, this is who you are. If you wanna you know, um, have that upbringing with your child in that certain way, then go for it. Um, but these are also the consequences to the discussion that we're talking about right now, which is resentment and fear and this over, you know, bearing need to, you know, be successful in this corporate world of the United States of America. So, yeah. I don't think we know yet. We, we don't know, like, how our kids are going to turn out in a sense. And I think we turned out pretty great for how our parents are were. And I feel like it's just going to get better and better. And we're just going to continue to learn and evolve. So I wouldn't say, like, we're getting too light or too not light. You know, we're, we're learning. We're I'll, learning. I'll be yeah. straight up. Yes. I, I think, I think, I think. <laughs> I, I'll be straight up. Yeah, like like it's a, it's a little bit too loosey goosey, and, and by loosey goosey, I, I just feel like there are no guardrails. Just in terms of your child, right? There is going out into the world and recognizing we all are different people, and so to respect people and to constantly learn. I appreciate you both for saying that because yes, we are recognizing we need to learn people's pronouns. We need to understand different sexualities and all of these things. But when it comes to your children, there is a way in which you should just help them to conduct themselves and present themselves. When you speak to someone, look them in their face. When you shake their hand, shake it strongly. And it may be even putting parameters on what they are or or not watching, right? I think you even had some parameters growing up where certain channels you couldn't watch. And I think those things are important. And I think also there's just so much. Social media has been a gift and a curse, right? We're constantly learning so much every day. And I think because of that, sometimes I think we take on these Twitter personalities where it's like, oh, you shouldn't beat your child. You shouldn't do. Listen, I ain't trying to get nobody cops called on it, but a little spanking ain't going to hurt nobody, in my opinion. Um, you know, I'm not saying to, to do whatever, but I think just helping people to understand actions have consequences. And, you know, love can look different ways. Excuse me, love can look different ways. But I think some people, a lot of people have just gotten a little too loosey-goosey and they're letting the world raise their children instead of them yeah. raise their children. Would you, what, what do you, how do you feel? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the, one of the biggest things the movie taught is that like, you can't deal, you know, in extremes, right? You have to really kind of be balanced. And, and sometimes there's a thing about being too soft, there's a thing about being too strict. Mm-hmm. When you're too soft, you, and sometimes some kids would be like, all right, you know, my, my parents are hands off, I'm gonna handle my business, but I'm gonna also be respectful. Like some kids, you don't have to really be on them like that. And that's understanding your kid, that's understanding how, you know, what kind of person they are innately and how they are when they're not at home, how they are when they are at home, and, and kind of acting accordingly. But some kids, like I'll say for myself, <laughs> you know, I feel like I mean I think back to how strict my dad was. You know, there was spanking, there was, you know, you had to, there was a bedtime, there was a you can't go out. I was born in Philly, you, you know, you can't go out, hang out with those street boys, you know, you can't do all, you know, you can't dress a certain way. There was no baggy pants. There was, you know, I I was in going to school in high waters, you know, what I'm saying? <laughs> like you know, all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like that was the that was the life. You know what I'm saying? And. I think back, like, you know, as much as I hated growing up like that and, 
but I think, yo, would I be the person I am today if I wasn't, if they were so strict with me? Like, if they if they were to let me go out to that party, you know what I'm saying? Like, would I be the person I am today? Like, and I think about some of the kids that I grew up with who didn't have strict parents, who let them go out to that party, who let them hang out with those those certain people. And um, I used to be like, damn, you know, dang, you know, I wish I, you know, could, you know, hang out with those people. I wish I could go out to that, to that function or whatever. But again, I see how those kids turned out and nothing against them, but Again, like I'm happy to see where I'm at, and if I was raised that way, would I be that or would I be them? And so it's again, like it's it's really important to like understand your kid, understand where you're raising this kid, understand as a parent how was I raised. Take some of the things that you were, take some of the good things that you were, you know, that were instilled in you, and take that with you. Right? We're losing recipes, as they say on Twitter. You know, <laughs> we're losing recipes for real. Like like you said, I think you made a good point. Like how you shake people's hand how you talk to people when you look them in the eye, those are so important, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause once you step out of, out of your friend group and you step into corporate America, you step into those business conferences, you talk to those people, those old school folks, they, they look at those things. Yeah. They That's look the at, first thing. They look at how your tie's tied, they look at how, you, how your shirt is, your shoes polished. They look at those things. And sometimes that thing can mean you getting an offer at a great, at a great spot or, you know, you have an income so you, you, so you can raise your family, all those things. And so those things are so important. And I feel like if that's what, me, if that's what it means to be strict, then so be it. You know, it is what it is, you know. And so some kids, you know, there, I, def, I definitely feel like there should be a standard for how you raise all kids. All kids should definitely learn X, Y, Z. A formula, so to yeah. speak. Yeah. Facts, you know. Yeah, yeah but there is definitely a, a, you know, there's definitely a, you could definitely be too strict, you know, mm-hmm. where like it, you push your kid to a point where it's like they don't understand what you're trying to, they don't understand the game plan, right? I, I think a lot of times too, my mom and my dad, they sit me down and say, this is what we, this is our goal for you. This is what we want you to be. Because when I had these opportunities, I didn't have these opportunities. You know, I couldn't do X, Y, Z. And so this is what the game plan is. So when I tell you to go to bed at a certain time, when I tell you to do your homework, to study, it's because I want you to be you know, the best you can be, you know, you don't got to be a doctor, you don't got to be, you know, this, but I want you, to, whatever you're going to do, be the best at it. How to be the best at it is when you, again, like have structure, right? And so even with them high waters, be the best with them. High exactly. Waters. exactly. Yeah. Be fly. I saw I wear high waters now proudly, you know what I'm saying? Because that's the style. Now. All right. I have a question for the group and by a show of hands, you say yes or no. Do you feel like the end justifies the means in terms of if your parents were super strict or maybe if they were super lax, you turned out great. Like, it makes sense and it works. So do you think, yes, it's okay? Are you talking about personally or in general? In general. I mean, you personally, you know, with your own experiences, but also just in general. Personally, yes. Generally, no. <laughs> personally, why, yes. why is it different? Well, I mean, I think it just goes to show just like even in the movie, because I think with Noni's mom, like, All of that came from a place of her wanting the best, but then it also drove her to push her daughter to feel like she had no voice to the point where she wanted to kill herself. Like, you know, she got everything she wanted, but the end, it wasn't worth it at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. For me personally, like, I feel really happy where I'm at right now. Even though my mom was really strict, I think she was really strict, but as I got older, she started to listen more and like find that balance. And that's why I think the end was a good payoff Mm -hmm. for me personally. I don't think that's always the case with everyone else. That's a good point. Yeah, I think Damn. for me, the end did justify the means, but I could have got here a lot easier. And I could have had a lot more ease, a lot more joy, saved money in a lot of therapy sessions to get to where I am today. But I think ultimately I wouldn't trade how I was raised for the world, honestly. Like, I'm grateful, so. I'd say the same. Same for me. It was worth it. I think the important part was coupling it with love and affection. My parents like weren't the ones who said like, no, they did say I love you. But it's like the I love you everybody says, you know what I'm saying? To wrap a conversation, etc. I knew I was loved though. It wasn't, there was never any meanness to it. And so I think that was the balance for me that worked for me. And I'd say it was worth it because I can see as an adult how it's benefited me. Just like you say, when I look at other people's lives. Yeah. Yeah. I I one percent agree with you, both of you. Generally, I don't know if everyone can handle right what I had to deal with growing up, you know. But I think personally, I, I think I've learned I've come to learn that I have very thick skin, you know, and I was able to kind of like, you know what, bite bite the bullet because I felt like eventually, you know, it you know, this too shall pass and I'll get older and I'll be able to do whatever I want, whatever I want. 
But, um, you know, so I developed thick, thick skin. And so I, again, like I'm happy to be the person I am today. So I, I thank my parents for all the things that they did for me because, you know, who knows what particular lesson was the thing that really, you know, flipped the switch for me, for me to kind of like take certain things more seriously. But again, a lot of, a lot of kids, you know, a lot of people growing up, that's not how you, you know, that's how they would have been able to deal with it. You know, they probably would have received that in a way that, you know, I mean, I think about my brother, even a great example is my brother. We're nine years apart. They couldn't, they couldn't raise him like they raised me. Like mm-hmm. I was, I was more so living in Philly up until like I was 12 and then I moved to Florida, where, whereas he like lived most of his life in Florida, different lifestyle, you know, different type of upbringing, different people are around him. So when I was going to school, there was a bunch of other kids that were kind of dealing with the same type of strict parenting. But when he went to school, you know, it was it was more of a suburban life. And this kid got to go get ice cream with this kid. You know what I'm saying? They got to watch TV. They got to do that life. Right? right? Living right. that life. They got to the park. And so, you know, it kind of goes back to what, kind of like the general theme of what we're talking about. It's just, you know, it really doesn't, it's a tough navigation. It's You have to really navigate it. It's almost like a tightrope, right? You can't be too straight, can't be too soft. But I definitely feel like, um, for me, it worked, you know, Cause I'm, you know, we're all here, you know, living and breathing healthy, living life, but um, who knows how that would have been for others. And so I can't say that would be true for other people. And so, I mean, ultimately, do you all feel like it's important, even at a young age, to understand where your parents are coming from? Yes. Uh, Do you think that would have helped maybe navigate? A hundred percent, at least for myself. Correct me if I'm wrong, I felt like there was a certain age that all of us uh, came into be to where we had to actually have that conversation to either our mom, dad, or just both um, afterwards, after the accolades, after the strict uh, schedule, after um, all of those uh, beats to be the person that you are, to be like, hey, you know, what's going on? What's the motive here? I understand that we're trying to, you know, achieve greatness and success, but, you know, we are also one body, one heart, one spirit, and I came through you, Mm -hmm. you know, so therefore, what can I do to um, reach that mark in a matter to where it's both healthy from a spiritual, mental, and physical standpoint, and also um, spiritual, living it on um, within the, the family, the last name. So the past hurts, and we all know that through that conversation, but you know, to identify it a little bit earlier and, and say, hey, this is who we are, this is what it is, yeah. and this is why I am doing this to be who you are right now, that would be very helpful. Um, you know, yeah. From my mom's standpoint, looking at my dad trying to be the success and then putting those parameters uh, and gates uh, around me only because not to reach to where my dad was. Didn't know that until and of age, and, you know, before, you know, that's why I turned into a goth kid and, and you know, kind of revolted against my, my mom and be like, hey, I wanted to do this. So that, that early conversation at a certain point at a certain age is key. Yeah, you know, knowing the game, would have, knowing the why would have been a game changer for me, yeah. for real. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of people have taken some great points from the things you guys have mentioned. So thank you for being so transparent and like candid with this. Like this is a really good conversation. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. All the conversations are good. I know I keep saying that, but I appreciate you guys. And I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Yes, girl. Yes. 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 All right, y'all. I'm not really trying to shake the table too much, but do y'all feel like Beyond the Lights is a black film? Because when I was watching it back, I'm like, they got Machine Gun Kelly in it. Is it? <laughs> It's got a lot of non-black folks. And I was just like, I don't know if I relate to it. So I'm curious, by a show of hands, like who watched this before a month ago? So two. How many times you watched it? I've serious like 20 times. Okay, I'm gonna come, come to you. This is your move. I'm gonna come to you. I'm gonna come to you next. It's just easy to play in the background too. I'm gonna come to you second, but first, why? Like, do you think this is a black film and why is it not? The biggest question is, what is a black movie? Like, what does it mean? Well, that's what, well I was gonna say, like, I, you, you going Friday, you going all these other things, and you gonna throw Beyond the Lights in there. <laughs> but what is a black movie to, to do? What is a black movie to you? I think a black movie is anything that has black people in it, honestly. Um, and, I, and even the part with Noni and her natural hair, that was a black moment. Her, like, letting her curls out and things like that. Um, was it relatable to all of us? No, because we are not pop stars like trying to. Some of us it, are. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, we yeah, had this. This, well, this, this, this was her movie, right here. This was her life. This is her life. Yeah. Playing in the so, background. Exactly. So my question really is: is like, do we have to like relate to a movie to enjoy it or call it a black movie? 
that's what I was thinking and I was wondering yeah. because initially I would say if it's predominantly black people then it's a black movie but I never thought of Beyond the Lights as a black movie so then I started thinking maybe it's because it wasn't directly talking about black experiences but then it brings you to the question of what is the black experience because there's so many different ones right that's her her experience it might be for me because to your point I see her mom throughout the whole thing and her mom is white and then Machine Gun Kelly I think that's the